Hi everyone and welcome to another edition of In The Metal. In The Metal, by now you may be familiar with, is a, a look behind the scenes of the world of independent watchmaking, where we try to figure out what uh, the techniques that are being used by different watchmakers who do their own thing. That's one of the beauties of independent watchmaking. Everyone has their own language, their own style, and essentially it's an extension of uh, their personality. And uh, so we, every week we have been, uh, had the, the great fortune to speak to some of the, the most amazing independent watchmakers in the world at the minute. And where some of those have been legends who have been established for 20, 30 years, there's also, thankfully, a new upcoming generation of really cool independent watchmakers. And they're highly technical. Their watches are not the kind that you would ever get signed off in a big corporate boardroom. So they're funky, they're cool. And uh, we've got one of those guys with us tonight. So uh, we will be talking to Stefan Ketelars, a uh, young Dutch guy, uh, in the next few minutes. And uh, to help me grill him will be my partner in time in North Carolina, U.S. master watchmaker. He's got big guns, hasn't he, man? <laughs> He's got a Rodian man. Is that how you had your... Uh, I'm, I'm ready for the Dutch. I'm ready for the Dutch. I'm going to kick some Dutch ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is something else, man. So, uh, hey, Dom, what's how are you doing? Man, How's the Irish thing going over there? Everything is going good. The sun is shining. It's a beautiful evening. And, uh, they, oh, yeah. oh, that's Ireland. No. <laughs> I, I think the only time your country would ever like explode is if the coronavirus gets so far out of hand, they close down all the beer distilleries. That would be the worst thing in the world. And, uh, let me tell you, there was you talk about you, you guys can protest. You want to yeah. we, if we had no beer, there would be hell. Yeah, uh, be no government left in twenty four hours. Now we don't fuck the government anyway. About <laughs> hey, uh, what we've got on tonight. We've got uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm real excited about Stefan. Uh, I've been following him. I, I just told him before. I've been following him for a while. This is a really, really. It, very interesting story. Uh, it just goes to show once again the perseverance. Uh, it, it's I'll let him tell the story of sure. uh, what you know what it's like to 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 do what he's done the way he's done it, and uh, it shows that anyone can somehow uh, if they're uh, if they have the skills, the know how, the perseverance, and even if they're they're young, uh, they can tackle it and and being an and become a, some form of an independent watchmaker, be be part of the scene and. And totally. get on their get on their way, you know, like any other business. Get on your way. Get. I would say, don't wait till it's over. Don't wait till everything's perfect. You know, just get going. Totally. You know. And uh, look, it, it, what this uh, guy is doing is uh, his watches are just you. Know, you see, like we work on we work on uh, in the watch industry. We, uh, we see watches all the time. Some of them, most of them are cool. Most of them we love, but occasionally something stands out and. Uh, one of the, uh, what, what this guy here is doing, uh, it stands out. And for more reasons than one, uh, it is uh, not only is it extraordinary uh, aesthetically and technically, but uh, this man is pitched to sell. He's got one of the best price points in the indie sector that I have seen in uh, a long, long time. Uh, so, you know, this yeah, is, we're going to talk yeah. about the, how he's pulling that off, too. Yeah, because that's, well, that's not easy. Yeah, I, I think sometimes young guys, sort of don't uh, put that kind of value on their work and uh you know but it but it grows it grows well, well, uh, well, well john, john maybe after this show he'll, he'll multiply his prices by 10 so if you want to order something before we bring him on right now place your order i am just going to do that right now so we're going to go over to uh amsterdam and to where uh stefan is hopefully sitting waiting on us to tell us what is happening with you. Good evening. Yeah, good good evening. What's the, up, Stephen? The, the price just went up 30%. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> welcome to In the Metal, Stefan. It is a great pleasure to welcome one of the 
new generation of indie watchmakers who are really making a massive impression on the industry with your style, with your uh, I, I just a love for the design of your watch. And we're going to get a look at a few of those in a little while. But uh, so welcome to In the Metal, and uh, it's good to have you on board. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's uh, I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah. So, Stefan, uh, like I told you a little while ago, and I told everybody here, I've been following your incredible uh, work for a while now on Instagram. Uh, you know, Instagram seems to be the place for all of us. We've all we've all kind of fell in there. I know some people are mm -hmm. are still on the Facebook and that kind of stuff, but uh, it seems this is where we can best show our works. And it's going to be a little bit part of this discussion of because it's a lot. You know, it's, it's we run a business. You know, besides. Sure. No. Besides the craftsmanship, right, that we have to make and the intricate parts uh, that have to be micron precision mm -hmm. and all that, we have to run a business. We're independent, and the less people we have to hire, uh, meaning for me would be none, mm -hmm. and I think for Stefan is none, uh, would be better. So we have to utilize social media, and that's what it's there for. I didn't have that when I was growing up, uh, when I ran a band and uh, that business, mm -hmm. but, but now you have a free magazine, and Instagram seems to be the fastest way. We can get yeah, things up. We are really lucky with uh, social media. Let's say you want to start a watchmaking business uh, 20, 30 years ago, then it's nearly impossible to gain like a really enormous public. And yeah, nowadays it's just using Facebook, using Instagram, Instagram using using 10, 15 tags, and uh, yeah, you can tackle the complete world. Yeah. No, so, I know. I know. Yeah. It, it, back way back when, when when I was in. Uh, the early days of watchmaking school, and then thereafter, after many, many, many years of apprenticeship and heading to Switzerland to Wostep and all that, it was impossible, like you just said. It's, it was a different yeah. time, different era. We could look at a, a little horological magazine and see like a little ad that someone might have spent $5,000 on. Yeah, yeah, really uh, expensive. Like you yeah. see like Paul, Paul Gerber, a triple rotor, you see just like a little picture or not even, he couldn't afford that, just it, you know, an, an interview they did with him. That's it. You know, that, that's, all, that's all you got. So now, well, what I want you to explain to young watchmakers is a little bit about yourself because your background is quite different than the traditional way because you got your business going. So this show, I want, I want to show other people that um, if you have the skills, you know, you, you could get your feet mm -hmm. on the ground and get running. And you never know where that's going to take you, especially if yeah, you're sure, young. Sure. Especially if you're young. Yeah. So explain to them how you got started. Um, you know, you're, again, like me, you're in a different mm -hmm. part of the world where, where uh, watch parts and machinery and everything is quite difficult to uh, to get. So if you could uh, yeah, explain yeah. How, how you got the bug. <laughs> and, and, uh, um, yeah, I think it nearly started 10 years ago. Um, I bought like a skeleton watch and I was really impressed with the uh, mechanics of this watch. And um, yeah, it, it started to fire. So I bought like my first um, Ita movement. I skeletonized this movement. And from there on, I just kept continuing um, yeah, make it more difficult. First skeletonizing, then complications, then skeletonizing in, compli yeah, in combination with complications. And uh, yeah, at the moment I'm very uh, what, what very books? Business. What books did you read to, after you got the, usually after you get into something, it could mm -hmm. be, it could be anything. Let's just say whatever it may be. Usually someone either is on Google nowadays, you know, or YouTube. Or yeah, yeah, books, that's a perfect question. Because you can't just get a watch and start taking it apart. Obviously, you'll just try to hairspring and whatnot. But how did you, you know, get going so fast uh, on your own? Yeah, it's, it's it's YouTube. You have so many videos where they explain how to um, open a watch movement, um, what every part its function is, um, how to apply different finishing. So yeah, I'm lucky with the internet nowadays. It's you, you got all the information on the internet and. Yeah, if you if you search for so many hours, you can yeah learn everything. It's, and did, uh, you learn, uh, did you? It, it was that your 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 education? Then did you did you attend watchmaking school or? No, 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 no. I've um, I've studied eight years. That's, that's why I'm asking. That's why this is this is such yeah. a unique story, Johnny. Is what I'm trying to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's why Stefan's story is, is very much different to most. Let's say we'll get in later on to others that have that have gone down his path and deep into his path. It's yeah, a, it's, um, I love stories like this, perseverance above 
a, a, a difference from the norm, mm -hmm. let's say, the, my route, which is a, a little different. So it shows that you can you can get there. And that information nowadays, especially for him, he's, he's adept at going on YouTube for 10 hours a day, whatever it takes to, to get that information. But what I find difficult, Stefan, what I'd like mm -hmm. you to, to explain to people is the bad information. There's tons of it there to show you how to decorate movements the wrong way. I mean, I've seen it. Okay, so how did you know if you don't have the experience, what you were watching was the way that you acquire the machine and then just test the ways and find your own ways? Fill us in. Yeah, it's, um, that's difficult. Um, but especially with movement finishing, um, there is um, not that much information you can find on the internet. I'm not sure if you uh, found the same, but um, you know, they show you the movement finishing, uh, but how to apply the actual finishing. That's more like a gray area. Mm -hmm. So um, actually, uh, most of the different finishing types are yeah, just sort of trial and error. Yeah, no, I, I agree. If you, if, you, if you go on YouTube and search uh, mm -hmm. Coast de Genève or Geneva Stripes, you yeah, know, you, yeah, you, yeah. You'll, you'll find maybe if you really hunt and hunt and hunt, you'll find uh, Hajime Osaka uh, in Japan. Uh, yeah. Doing, yeah, 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 yeah. But he does it in a very untraditional way. He doesn't do it with wood and paste the way we, uh, we're, we're mm -hmm. someone like me is classically uh, traditionally trained to do. Mm -hmm. You know, he found his own way because, mm -hmm. like, like you, it's a very parallel story here. Like you, he didn't go to school either, no. and he learned from the George Daniels books and other books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the the yeah. watchmaking Bible. I yeah, also have yeah. here in my. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all have that book, right? Yeah, yeah it's very yeah. important. I, yeah, I, yeah, I, find, I find it important, but what I keep saying it when we interview yeah. someone is, it's like, I don't know what it says in that book. It's like you have to have 57 different jobs, uh, of, of learn 10,000 hours in to make, uh, you wrote, make your own watch back then when he wrote the book. But I say now, someone has to certainly update that book because to be an independent, most of the time, we now have to learn CAD. We have to learn CAM. Mm -hmm. yeah, we have to somehow, someone like me, you know, you, you might want to learn how to build your own CNC machine to get the uh, the, the, the uh, accuracy that we need in watchmaking because uh, they're very large, uh, uh, they're very expensive. And the part, yeah, 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 yeah. And the, part, the part nobody tells you, and I'll tell you all if you're interested, is if you get one of those beautiful, nice, you know, almost you know, maybe a million dollars, CNC machine. Wait till you get your first a month's electricity bill, <laughs> because it's gonna blow your mind. <laughs> it's a, it's crazy, insane. The electricity they suck. So it's better to keep them small, nice tabletop model that you can uh, uh, make our parts in. Unfortunately, nobody actually manufactures one. There's an old current, uh, but good luck trying to find one. So we need those extra jobs that they should be added to that book for modern day independent watchmaking. Yeah. yeah. I also built my own uh, my own gear cutter, my yeah. own automated gear cutter. Oh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah! I saw that. that yeah. yeah, absolutely amazing. Absolutely, right. the ingenuity that we have to have is what we. Yeah, there you go. I love this. I love this. We're getting yeah, there. Yeah, that was just recently. You just finished that, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I saw that. that. That's that's really killer. And, and yeah, it's really cool that you're building your own CNC machine. Yeah, yeah, that took a a, a year. Of my life, and then maybe another <laughs> another six months or so to uh, perfect it and get it going, and and uh, you know mess around with different things to get the to get it where it needs to be. It's just all for all for my head, and, and again, you know, searching on YouTube to find the right parts that that would uh, give me what I needed in the end. I actually, have to if you can send me the blueprints after the show, then uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, what, I, what what's really cool is see. We, we we need Stefan and, and we're gonna we're gonna find us in, in all independent watchmakers. In order to get a job done, like he needs to make gears. There's no such thing as we just go buy a gear cutter. That's not the way this works. It's all secret. Like even the gear cutters themselves, what they're where to get them, what they're made out of. You know, it's just till recently uh, that we actually know where those places are. There's very few people that actually manufacture the actual cutters, and and at, it, it's very difficult. Every step we have, especially someone like Stefan, who's in, he's not in Switzerland, he's like me, I'm in the United States. Nobody wants to tell us all these secrets. First of all, they huh. speak French, and if they speak English, 
it's it's not much English, and if they do, they still don't want to tell us because that means we're taking away uh, their job, possibly so income from them. It is a business behind the scenes, so it's a very difficult process to get these little secrets out there. So any little things that are uh, on YouTube are actually very helpful, as as Stefan said. So congratulations on the gear making machine. Uh, that yeah, is uh, that's that's killer. <laughs> I think uh, until now it's the the smallest automated gear cutter that's ever made ever made on the world. Wow, that's <laughs> unbelievable! So oh. I just type in the uh, diameter of the of the uh, wheel that needs to be cut. I type in the material, the amount of teeth, and the rest is done all automatically. But 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 fill people in because if I'm correct, you have a background in in beyond just like normal tinkering in electronics, correct? Yes. So yeah, I've studied eight years of ele electronic engineering. So I can write software, I can build PCBs, I can um, control stepper motors, I can all yeah do do yeah do those things. Mm, I could have used you a year and a half ago. Same <laughs> 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 yeah. thing. I mean, I have to build my own. You know, for CNC, you have to build your own computers. Mm -hmm. You got to find it, your own your own uh, control boards. You have to find your, what servos will work. You have to get everything yeah. talking to each other. It's all in DOS. And you know, and so on and so forth. So yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I got, I got some missing brain cells that I, I could have used you and saved those brain cells. <laughs> but brain, yeah. brain cells you lost over the years with. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that too. But that was <laughs> <laughs> that was another life. <laughs> no, no, well done, nice one, Stefan. But um, Stefan, do you find that you, well, one of the things that I, I, I think. Because so many young watchmakers are coming from different backgrounds. So I, I was writing today about uh, a young guy from uh, Ingushetti, who you may or may not have heard of yet, uh, Sorev uh, Rashid. And again, he had no formal education either. So right. he was landlocked away from any sort of influences. But my point to you being, with your electronic engineering uh, experience, I find a lot of indies bring into the industry something that they've brought from the from their past do you find that your experience has actually contributed to the way you look at watchmaking or the way that you you, you do your work mm, yeah i work really efficient i think that's what i've learned from my um yeah background so i've tried to um you know yeah master everything and then try to improve it and also try to you know increase the time a little bit and decrease the time and i think especially it's working efficient and yeah that's also why the price is yeah lower compared to the other yeah independent watchmakers wow that, that, that's something that's going to come on come to in uh, yeah. a, a little while about because you definitely your, your watches are amazing to me, they're amazing values. Hey, Johnny, you got a picture? Throw, throw something up. Oh, I think we could do that okay then. So, um, what would you like? How about the Mars? The, yeah. yeah? How about this one? So, uh, that is the Terra 3D, but it's the Mars version, is it, yeah? Yeah. Stefan. So, this watch, um, I can tell you like all the uh, personal personalization factors on this uh, this piece. So uh, this watch has also a rotating 3D mask that is um, hand painted. Uh, the dial itself is hammered and etched. The uh, circle around the dial is hand engraved and also etched. The hands are made of, out of titanium and heat treated. And also part of the balance wheel is skeletonized in order to show the motion of the balance wheel. It, and like all the parts you can see from here are all made in house. So, so Stefan, are you doing solely all the work yourself? Yeah. Wow. That's, that's, that's incredible. So you're, you, uh, when, did you, when did you learn and how did you learn how to do hand graving? Oh, uh, no, no, with the, the hand engraving, I've, no, no, no. Um, the engraving on the dial, so like the numbers and those things, um, I engrave, uh, but that's, uh, we, I will use a CNC machine for this, but the uh, Kate Lass, it's hand engraved by another Dutch person. So in the Netherlands, we have like very um, tight community with like other few watchmakers, 
and right. uh, we have one person that has specialized just only in engraving and um, all the engraving on my watches. So it's a name and my uh, logo on the burgle, it's done by him. So do you have a, a little CNC machine that's doing the engraving there? Or do you have, again, uh, a friend, a Dutch friend that is doing the, the engraving for you? Uh, no, I've got a small CNC machine. Oh, so okay. I bought a CNC machine and I modified the CNC machine. And at the moment, I'm also, yeah, I'm working towards building my own CNC machine. So I'm still searching for the most accurate component. And um, yeah, I'll start building this machine in within two months. Okay. Well, if I can help in that area, uh, well, we can DM each other and talk a little bit. Yeah, nice. Yeah, we'll be I, helpful. I'm, 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 I went through that struggle and there's no, mm -hmm. there's, there's no one really to learn from uh, yeah. except, the, you know, like Hajime or uh, he's one of the first. And yeah. uh, Mark Jenny, who we had on here, is the first, as far as I know, who's, he set the trend, you know. To, so yeah. it's, it's, it's a lengthy process, but with your brain, you, it, you can escalate. And the knowledge that someone... Uh, some of us have now. Uh, so yeah, we, we I've already started start drawing inside my head, so it's, uh, it's, it's I, I'm close to an end uh, result. <laughs> but it's not, but it's not about drawing. It's about um, it's, what do you want to do with it? If you do want to make nameplates, then it's a whole different ball game as far as the accuracy goes, and uh, and it's it took it, the research is crazy. You don't want to build it and then get there and go. Ah, it's you know I can do one. The problem is what happens when we want to do number two, three, and four. Um, right. Will they be? Will they come out? You know, with the accuracy that you need, uh, repeatability. The, so don't, yeah, yeah, that's that's. I'm going to add like um, a few extra components on the CNC machine in order to monitor the temperature, mm -hmm. and in order to increase or decrease the temperature, um, in order to make sure that the complete machine has a constant temperature during the milling, mm -hmm. and yeah. then yeah. with um, linear uh, linear axis. Mm -hmm. You can get an accuracy accuracy of um, yeah zero point zero one millimeter. Zero point zero one. Yeah, yeah. That's what current. That's what the current does. The yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so all I can say is, as as you can see, Stefan's not normal, right? <laughs> no, these guys. <laughs> none, none of us are normal. So his, <laughs> his normal is skewed a little bit from my abnormal. Well, I call it normal, but it's abnormal to you guys. We're all a little bit off, and it takes a little bit of offness to be an artist. It takes a lot of bit of offness to be a true artist, and you need to be out of your freaking mind to be out of your freaking mind. And that's the stuff that legends are made out of is the guy who's out of his freaking mind, yeah. right? And we have some of those people on this show, right, Johnny? So Absolutely. Ste Stefan's on his way to be out of his mind, and then out of his <laughs> mind again. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. So yeah, he lives, he, it's, it's really important to follow your passion. So um, too many people are just making uh, logical choices. It's mm -hmm. it's logical to uh, find a, a well-paid job, and it's logical that you will work from eight to five hours, eight to hour, um, eight o'clock in the morning until five hours. Yeah. Um, yeah, but for me, it's just I'm I'm following a dream, and yeah. I'm doing whatever it takes in order to yeah succeed with this dream. And right there, that's that's what we have to convey to, to anyone who's trying or even thinking if you're a collector and you're saying, oh, I'm too old or I'm too young or I'm too this or I'm too that, you know, I, I got my nine to five. Um, you know, Steph is a great example of anything is possible. You can do it. You don't have to start out being an independent and say, I need to make $35,000 watches to, to eat and do this and, and, and you know, you got to start somewhere, so you start. Yeah. You start with your art, and make sure your art is a good representation of who you are. And obviously, Stefan's it, it's him. You know the, the globe, how he figured out, you know how to make the globe, and he was smart. Okay, right, Stefan. We'll talk about this. He didn't do something stupid like me, like try to make a ground up movement of every part is manufactured and designed by me, and it's like nothing else on planet Earth, which takes right. a very long time, and you need an extreme background and. In traditional watchmaking, he took a, a base 6497 slash 6498 Eaton movement, which is basically like buying. And if you're into cars, it's just, it's an old Chevy, you know, uh, it's an old Chevy block, you know, that's going to stand the test of time and last forever. And you get yeah. the block there, and now what are you going to do with that? You build on it. So he built what we, what we call a module or a semi-module, 
And that's his art that sits on top of a watch that keeps great time. You can do anything you want. That's your art. And what a great platform to start. That's how uh, we started my school. Uh, we don't, you know, we make bridges on top of a base, a main plate, which is the hardest thing to make in watchmaking uh, consistently. And, and you just make the bridges, you can modify wheels, you can skeletonize wheels, uh, skeletonize the bridges, and you learn how to line everything up and change the watch to make it your own art. And from there, you don't know where you're going to end up. And what he's created is way out of the box. So that's why everyone is looking at stuff. It's, yeah. it's how yeah. he produces this for now, for today, at the price he does. Like he said, it has to be something where he wakes up and doesn't sleep much. So he wakes up from his one and a half hours of nightly sleep. <laughs> and he's yeah, with, but it's, it's with, like, um, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> like Arnold Schwarzenegger says, um, instead of sleeping eight hours, you should sleep faster. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's yeah. true. Uh, but it, it was never my intention to start an actual business. So it was always like, um, yeah, just a hobby. I was started by uh, yeah, my my regular work, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it's it's it just it, it rolled in a company. It just took off, right? Yeah. Yep. So I did the um, eight years electronical engineering. Um, I started working at um, yeah ASML. I'm not sure if you ever heard of it. This, mm -hmm. it's like um, one of the Dutch biggest companies. They they produce these um, very big machines that manufacture these, these electronic chips. And for me, it was just a desk job. So I was in the at the engineering side, the uh, electronic development, and it was all writing documents, or it, or it was sitting in meetings. And my way out was um, watchmaking during the evening. That was wow. finally the time that I could do something with my hands. And instead of writing documents and just countless hours of um, yeah of sitting in meetings, and it just yeah I, I kept going, kept spending weekends making uh, manufacturing these movements. Mm -hmm. And yeah, eventually it it rolled into a business. A business. So I, I was just really lucky. Okay. Yeah, it, it's it's lovely when you fall into something together. But as you say, that is the beauty of uh, you know, as you say, living the dream because you're doing yeah. something that uh, you know, other people can't really uh, envisage. They can't imagine themselves doing, and. Uh, and sometimes you have to think outside the box just to, uh, to, 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 to follow that dream, even if it doesn't make sense at the time, even if people are saying, you know, why, why do, are you doing this? Mm -hmm. I, I, again, that young guy I was talking about a few minutes ago uh, in Ingushetia, which is in, so it's between the Caspian and the Black Sea. It's far away from anywhere where there's watchmaking going on. And he is... 22 years of age, 23 years of age. Well, he, I know that he just sold out his uh, first year's uh, production of his first editions. Oh, right. It's only 12, 13 watches in total. But I bet you, uh, when I was uh, thinking of him today, I was thinking, I bet you behind that guy is a dad who's going, well, no, no, you, <laughs> I didn't expect that. Uh -huh. I fucking told you so, you know. Okay, you know, you got that belief. So um Yeah, but 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 what what I'm trying to say is this is not something like uh um another art form where you can really just usually just dive in and go, I'm gonna be a watchmaker and that's my new title and I'm gonna make watches. There's things inside a mechanical watch like hairsprings. It's just you you gotta go to school. So for someone like me, uh, yeah, I started before watchmaking school. I started when I was eight years old, but still, to be able to do what Stefan's done and accomplish that in a short period of time um, without traditional training or at least a basic school of three years, it, it baffles the mind of us people who are watchmakers. Uh, you know, to train watchmakers in school, where we spend six months to a year sitting at our bench just messing with a hairspring. That's it. We're not, allowed, not allowed to work on the rest of the watch because the heart of the watch is the hairspring. So we look at that like if anyone opens up a watch and doesn't know, it hasn't had that training in hairsprings, and they just touch that hairspring, just one touch, the watch never runs right again. They don't know what to do. They haven't been trained on hairsprings. That, mm -hmm. that really is the bottom line. I mean, you, you can't you can't learn that on YouTube. Okay, you do need an instructor who can show you what's right, what's wrong. You could learn about hairsprings and so on and so forth. So for someone like Stefan or someone like 
Hajime Osaka. Why do you think he, he wins all those awards? Because we're all baffled. He, he's got to be lying to us, right? Like, how does he build a watch from scratch that fast and 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 has no traditional uh, training? It's it's. But some people they break through and they find their own way to get that art. The art is in them, and they got to get it out, and they just figure out a way. And Stefan's done that, and he's created a look to his timepieces that is, you know, very, very unique. And, uh, and, and he made the mechanics work. You know, obviously, now we know he has an extremely mechanical brain. Um, and, yeah. Yeah. So, you, you know, he's, had to, he's probably been building stuff, you know, in his garage or something, you know, his whole life. When you were young, were you always building stuff, be it electronics or be it mechanical? Yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, instead of playing with Lego, I was, um, yeah, working in the garage. Sawing and filing and sending and uh, yeah, there you yeah, go. I've been building since I can walk. So it's <laughs> there you go. Brilliant. So see, see, there's always this is what the stories that we we like to get out here, Johnny. That it's not just oh, I picked up a book and now I look, you can buy my watch. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's because you can't it, do that. It's, yeah. it's, it's in them. You know, uh, it, it it has to be in you. You know, my 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 bedroom growing up looked like you know like the, like NASA. You know, everyone's the whole neighborhood. Their their home stereos, their car stereos, their guitar tube amps. Everything was is in my in my room. I mean, because I just fix stuff. That's I like that. Mm -hmm. I like to take yeah. broken crap and I make something out of it. So it was innately in me. So I can problem solve. I'm a problem solver. So that's how I in watchmaking went from one one place to another to another to yeah. another. To, to being in those positions of not just working on complications, but being hired to test for longevity for some of the Swiss brands. Will it break later? Will it, when will it break? What part will break? Because I've seen so much broken crap in my life. <laughs> I know what'll last. I get. But Stefan, you know, tell us more about your timepieces. You know, and 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 where where you're headed. You know, because sometimes people get to your point, and it's very interesting. I'm trying to show people you can dive in, you can get this done, you you can start. Um, but sometimes people get they get in so deep like you, and then they just say, "Okay, I got to stop. I want to go to school. I want to go to school to learn something I can't learn on YouTube." There's people out there that have done that as well. They, they get to a certain point and then they hunger for more knowledge. And they really, the only way to get knowledge would be, you know, go to Wolf Step or go to KWHCC now, the amazing school. Something like that. Is that do you see something like that in your future? Or are you just going to keep pummeling down the road? Yeah, I've got um, I've got a lot of connections in the watchmaking world. So I think when I when I turn out at the point that I can't make something or don't understand it, I can always pull some strings and learn from those guys. But yeah, I have to say I'm not seeing myself going to school um, for watchmaking. Because yeah. Uh, um, yeah, like like building movements, that's not something you will learn at the watchmaking school. I, 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 building complications, or I think I think the watchmaking school is like more like really traditional. But yeah, the complications and movement building, I'm not sure if you if you can learn this with uh, with watchmaking education. I I, I think of what of the. Uh, I've been asked uh, people are asking to have a look at some of uh, some of your 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 pieces and uh, so mm -hmm. um, I, I think in a way if I show something like the Terra 3D that people can understand maybe why you don't feel that you need that to go to watch making school what are you going to learn that's going to really change what you're doing there like you know and uh, because that is it's it's it, it, it's probably not the best angle to, to, to get a look at it, but it is a beautiful three-dimensional display of time with that beautiful bridge, uh, the balance bridge and um, the off-center hours, minutes, and that revolving Earth, similar to the Mars that we looked at a moment or two ago. But uh, like that kind of says, you know, I, I don't really need to learn much more about this because <laughs> I'm getting pretty good at this anyway, you know. Um, uh, yeah, but you are always learning. I'm learning every day, and yeah. I will be learning yeah. until I ever stop watchmaking because something happens with, happens with my hands. But yeah, it's 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 an endless cycle of learning watchmaking. Yeah, now I'm gonna go back to one of your but early. I think, I think that's the yeah the most interesting thing of watchmaking that it's you're never done with learning. It's yeah, it's like golf. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, you're good for an hour and then you suck. <laughs> and you can never learn enough. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. How did, how, how, uh, Stephen, how did you learn uh, about gear cutting? Um, there is uh, one other Dutch Dutch watch brand. And <laughs> he did cut my gears for the first 10 watches. And I saw his setup. It was like an enormous machine with a small gear cutter and it was partly automated. And I told him, um, one day I will make this machine only uh, one tenth, tenth of the size that your machine is. And he was like, yeah, yeah, I have to see this. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, then I built this machine. So the first few gears were cut by a different watchmaker. And yeah, the rest of all my yeah gears are yeah cut but, by myself. But how did you learn about modules and what size gear cutter? Where you know where to get gear cutters? Uh, yeah, the, 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 the finding the gear cutters was that was really difficult because uh, until now I only found one uh, website where they sell these gear cutters, and I think it took me yeah three weeks to one month before I found uh, the the right website for this. Yeah, and uh, learning modules, they're just searching on the internet. It's just a few, yeah, like a few basic calculations, and um, that wasn't too difficult. But yeah, finding the place where you can buy this, those, um, yeah, those cutters, that was like really difficult. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And finding a place where you can buy glasses, where you can manuf manufacture watch cases, uh, finding a good person who can make watch straps. Um, yeah, like, like finding decent mills for your milling machine and, and everything. Mm -hmm. It's just... It's a struggle. Yeah, you can find it. And, it works. and it's very costly. We, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, an expensive yeah. hobby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And every time we mess with a different material, which is what I'm doing here on, on, on my time pieces here, uh, uh, you know, we have to try different brands, different mills, and it's very, very costly. Uh, this is a part, part that, uh, the business that most people don't know. They just see the end pretty product. Or they might see pictures that we post. Oh, look, I made this part. But they don't realize, you know, it's $6,000 later of uh -huh. you know, broken end mills or broken, you know, it broke the machine twice or whatever it may be. And they wonder why it takes so long it's in, a, in manufacturing. It, we still do trial and error, even at the top, 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 top level. Yeah. We're always trying to break, break, break through to the next innovation or the next uh, complication and or the next material or something really cool. And it's not to sell it. It's because we love what we do. We're just trying to reinvent, just like in music in my past, you know, being, uh, writing a song is the standard progressive way where there's intro, verse, chorus, and everything is structured. We know that formula works for the human brain and how many clicks per minute on beat, you know, makes your body do a certain movement, you know, for dance music, it's a certain <laughs> That stupid thing you hear all the time, four on the floor. Yeah. But you know, for rock and roll, it's something else. The music I, you know, helped to 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 create is was something that no one had ever heard before. There was no beat. Like, where is the beat? You know, I mean, it's it's not there. So you go outside the box to reinvent uh, for yourself. It's really not for anybody else. It just so happens along the way you catch a lot of fans. So in music, they're called fans. They're really not fans. They're kind of part of the band. They just they're they're, they're sensing what's inside you as an artist. And they are, they're, they're finding a companionship with who you are in what they are. And it's the same thing in watchmaking. Stefan released his timepiece. People looked at it and said, how much? Is that 65 grand? About 50 grand? 40 grand? It's got to be. And, and when he tells them the price, even for me, I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, how is this possible? Like, is it being made in China? You know, was it made out of plastic? And then it's like, it's stainless steel coated like the, oh, yeah. like the cheap refrigerators we get now. You know, it's not stainless steel. It's, that's not real stainless steel. Doesn't everyone know that already? It's this thin little coating of Chinese crap, you know? <laughs> it, I mean, it's, it, but that's not what it is. You know, Stefan's hand making his stuff. And he's, with his ingenuity and his intellect, he's figured out a way to break through every single barrier of the traditional way of, of watchmaking. And it just goes to show you, you know, Anybody, not anyone can do it. I mean, you got to be quite intelligent and have perseverance and be able to get out of bed each morning, you know, a little bit early. But you can break through and make your, give your art to the world. I find it fascinating. Yeah. Totally fascinating. We have questions in here from some of our uh, 
uh, people who are watching us tonight, thank you everyone for uh, tuning in and uh, getting with us here on In The Metal. And uh, so we'll, we'll cover some of these questions in a, in a little while because the, the, the the, the placement for them would maybe suit a little later in the show. But uh, Lulu, who's been a great supporter of In The Metal in Indonesia and has been sharing us, she's wanting to know, uh, what is the price range of, of your watches? This is going to surprise a few people, isn't it, Stefan? Mm, the the price range of my watches? Yeah. Uh, it depends if it's like an, mm. um, or uh, the pocket watch movement I use, the ETA, or like mm -hmm. my in-house movement. And the price can variate from 3.8k uh, without tax uh, in euro um, up to 15k. That's so. Sorry. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, it, it's fantastic. Well, I, I actually haven't been aware that you were you were pitching your new in-house movement. Is this the in-house movement here then? No, 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 no. Um, no. This is still an ETA with uh, modified bridges. Ah, uh, so uh, uh, yeah. Okay. This okay. one is an ETA 6497, and mm. I reground the base plate. Um, I modified the uh, movement bridges. I uh, frosted finish the top side of movement bridges. I added anglage, um, black polished the screws, added the number plate, name plate, swan neck. Um, also, mm, the center wheel, I uh, refinished this one. So yeah. it's still um, yeah a, a, a bot in movement, but I just um, yeah completely adjust this movement. And yeah. Oh, and the top of this movement is Sunburst ground actually. And what machines do you have in your workshop that enable are enabling you to do all this? Can you can you tell us a few? Um, yeah, a lot. Um, I've got one watchmaker led, uh, one watchmaker led for. Um, adjusting movement bridges like sunburst ground movement bridges on circular ground. Mm -hmm. um, I can uh, send blast in my shop. Uh, I've got my CNC machine. I've got my uh, gear cutter, and yeah, I've got a ton of handmade watch tools, watch parts, um, mm -hmm. a lot of microscopes. I think around four or five to watch making bench. Um, yeah, Amazing. it's just. Yeah, so, I've got a lot of uh, equipment. Yeah, no, I've seen most of it on your Instagram. I just want the people to know that uh, you know it's not uh, it's an elaborate, incredible you know uh, workshop, and uh, it's not um, big, giant, huge Hauser jig borers and massive CNC machines. And mm -hmm. you know you can get this done uh, on a relatively decent budget and ingenuity. Uh, obviously, Stefan's been building stuff his his whole life, so he's probably found some of the uh, vintage uh, watch making lathes like mm -hmm. I have, and you gotta get them and you gotta restore them, you gotta keep finding parts. And let's remember again, he's not in Switzerland, okay? So for you people out there that don't understand, trying to find these machines, and then the, the parts that they're missing later on that are 100 years old or 150 years old and then restore mm -hmm. them is, is extremely hard. So finding parts is impossible. Finding jewels, rubies, mainsprings, hairsprings, whatever you need, is impossible. Ida does not sell movements to someone like Stefan. Okay, so yeah. you got to find the movements uh, and the machines. We don't, you know, we have to set up, and he has to do it in another country. And so he, had, well, he has to have a friend in Switzerland somewhere, somehow, some way to get what he needs. So these are all stumbling blocks for people like me. I'm in the United States, which is an impossibility. And I haven't even touched upon the metal he needs, the specialized, specialized brass, specialized steel, whatever he's using inside his movement. It's just a complete nightmare. It's not like you opening up a car repair business and you just call up because yeah, you got a yeah. Mercedes in and I want to. I need. I need a Mercedes radiator. I need a Mercedes alternator, and it just gets sent. That's not the way this works. Okay, yeah, everything is me, against yeah. us, right? It everything. took me months before I found the right steel, the right brass. It's yeah. There you go. Everything. It's like yeah. It's it's not really well described on the internet. So yeah. it's it's hours and hours of searching and testing and trying and yeah even finding the right breast that's that's a challenge on its own. And then even when you find it, Stefan. So so what I'm trying to do here is is not just it's, it's between me and you, but I'm trying to show other people that even when we search, we could be searching for weeks, right? And we find the right brass. Let's say we'll just use brass as an example. Yeah. Then we say, oh, I finally found the brass I need. 
And then we make a call and they say, I'm sorry, we can't sell you two sheets of that. We yeah. can sell you <laughs> yeah, 200, yeah, yeah, yeah. 200 sheets and that'll be $13,000. And that's the way this goes. And these are the struggles that independence has because we're not really manufacturers, we're artists. We're creating the top level of micro mechanical art. We can't do that making 500 watches. The bottom line is it's just, it, that's it's just cookie cutter crap. Will, yeah, you know and everything takes an insane amount of time like every step it's it it, it can take weeks up to months so it's uh, yeah it's a it's a lot of pain uh yeah, yeah. so uh well, yeah wow is all i can say you've no, no, it, it, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. But it's, so it's, it's accomplished so much so fast it's, it's Stefan, tell everyone if you don't mind can you tell everyone your age uh, i'm 27. Okay. I've been um, a full-time watchmaker now for two years. And before this, I did it part-time, like 10, 20 hours a week for two years. So I'm like four years in the watchmaking business and two years full-time. So, so <laughs> let, That's so mad. It's yeah, no, it's crazy. But I remember when I was in my 20s, look, I, you know, I, I woke up in the morning and said, I'm going to take over the world. I, I did it. <laughs> you know, I, 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 not, I not only took over this world, I have you know, a song playing on planet Mars. So I took over you the world. Been, uh... so, when you're young, anything's possible. Um, but I want to touch upon something we haven't touched upon yet upon it. Somebody actually wrote in here, Johnny, so maybe we will touch upon one of the, one of the questions here. Yeah, we do have comments to get back uh, to you. This is uh, Captain Forrest, 34. Captain Forrest uh, is a, asked a question that I, I should be asking everyone, being that it's uh, right in the forefront of what we do now, Stefan, because mm -hmm. part of what we do is making, you know, we have to have a case for our watch, which is basically like a miniaturized submarine, okay? It's, it's, a, mm -hmm. it's, a, sealed, it's a sealed submarine. And that's an art in itself. That's what I'd like to let the collectors know. For me, I'm a micro mechanic. I like the inside of a watch. I, you know, I'm, I'm the designer of every part of my watch. I did everything from soup to nuts. I'm not really into case making. It's like not my gig. I, I'm case finishing is all right. I, I just don't like my hands completely filthy with all that crap that you know that everyone gets on. Even wearing gloves, it's just not my thing. We, we each have a thing. So, uh, you know, there's someone um, uh, who's making cases. And he's broken that barrier uh, in 3D, 3D printing. Um, and he's making out of the gold and platinum. It's never been done before. And I'm sure you, I'll let you mention who, who, who this gentleman is. I'm sure you know who he is. I was wondering if you, uh, with your background, uh, were interested in kind of moving in that direction someday into the future. Uh, no, no. It's, um, it's not a Dutch watchmaker that uh, 3D prints those cases. Uh, what I try to do is yeah, uh, keep the design of my cases as simple as possible. There's already a lot happening on the on the dial side, so I will keep the case more like traditional. Mm -hmm. it's, well, yeah, it's not your You don't need to specialize in elaborate case no. making. It's exactly what I what I was trying to say about myself. But it's no. we're, all, we're 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 all a little different in what we do. That's what's so wonderful about. Uh, watchmaking that it's it's each right, individual right. independence art and uh, you know who I'm talking about too right Johnny uh, yeah uh, what's it, how do you pronounce yeah, it yeah Holton Rick watches Michael Holton yeah, yeah. Holton -Rick. I found yeah. that's that's his whole story and his struggle I'd like to get him on here because that's a fascinating we story and him, yeah. that's and, and for <clears> any, <throat> even Stefan for someone even like me and you who are interested in machinery and building our own machinery from scratch and all that I find that really fascinating. I know he's not making it himself, and he's outsourced it. Perhaps someday he will. Uh, but you know, he, he broke through on that. It's a lot, a lot of work. Um, I wouldn't have time to, to do the finishing uh, because they come so raw, uh, and I, you know, my, my time is spent uh, from ground up on my movement. But I just find that fascinating, and what the future will hold for three D printing, and, and perhaps sometime in the future for, for parts that are inside the watch as well. What we could do with that? Yeah, yeah, that's that's really difficult. Yeah. Like you, um, you're printing a metal on top of each other and you get like a lot of tension inside the material. So it's, it's really difficult to 3D print delicate parts because, uh, because of this tension, all these components will, yeah, how do you say it? It will change yeah. its shape because it of the tension yeah. inside it's the metal. Yeah, 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 yeah. It might not have the strength that we need for certain parts, but possibly for people who do cosmetic parts or this or that. We don't, know what the, we don't know what the future will bring you know, or what they do. I just find it a very interesting technology moving into the future. Look, people said 
you wouldn't be able to have our own little C, you know, CNC machine that's, you know, the accuracy of what I have sitting right in front of me here. They told me, you know, same thing, impossible, can't do it. You know, mm-hmm. 20, 25 years ago, Stephen, when I was in school, you know, you, you can't, how are you going to make your own watch? You know, you can make one a year, you know, like uh, Roger Smith was doing. And, uh, uh, and how we, that's how, what we all thought. So it was either we do after sale service or we go work for a company who's assembling new watches and that kind of thing. It was just, no, no, it was no. an impossible possibility, impossibility unless you outsource uh, certain parts or main plates right from somebody else. Mm-hmm. To get where we are now in independent watchmaking, uh, if I would have told you we could do this 25 years ago, we, you know, we'd be laughing, come, walking out of the Wall Step School, you know, going sitting by the river in Neuchatel, go, it's not, it's not, what do you need, like $20 million, bro? It ain't going to happen, you know? Mm-hmm. But look where we are now. Now we, as independents, we're the leaders of the industry, okay? The big, giant companies are looking at us to go, where's the breakthrough? What are they doing? How are they operating the business? How are no. they selling those those watches, how are they selling them when they don't even have a PR team? How is this possible? How, mm. do, how do we learn from them? And they're, they're still not getting it because we're artists and it's true to our heart is how. <laughs> we have perseverance yeah, in a different yeah, yeah. way. We're not working for a paycheck yeah. at all. We're, you know, we're, we're, we, we, we'd love to be blessed to not have that, that burden or worry of, of you know, where we're going to get you know, our next lobster tail or King Crab Leg or something like that. <laughs> but we're really doing it from the heart, you know, with your artists, the ones that are at the top of the independent food chain. So support your independent yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, that's the beauty of watchmaking. It's, it's, you should never have, like, um, only the money for a goal in any yeah. sort of business. It's, it's just, yeah, doing what you like and do it, yeah, every week. So I how think are you you're best with this. How do you balance it? And, and, and you're doing such a wonderful job on social media. So... I try to present this also to all the young watchmakers and old watchmakers who, who you know, can barely use the internet and are still on old to, you know, Facebook and whatnot. Yeah. That, that's very time-consuming, Facebook, as far as I'm concerned. It, well, not up, really, it, not it, really. You, know, you have up. to be efficient. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. so, all right, Phil, then fill us in, Stephen, on, on your outlook so, on um, the business side yeah. of things, how you launched this so fast. Obviously, art sells, okay? You, you created something that's visually appealing to many, Mm-hmm. And that, you know, sometimes that just clicks, you know, but you're a super intelligent dude. So explain to people, give us a little bit of insight of how you're running that side of the social media and, and keep it going and sit at the bench. Yeah, it's uh, during the day, I just continue making pictures. And let's say um, I have to take a toilet break and then it's um, on the toilet. <laughs> 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 I have to take social media. And that's efficiency. <laughs> the Dutch way. Awesome, bro. That's the yeah. best. I, I try to, uh, to update like every every day or every two days, like a few pictures what I'm working on. So I'm not trying to spam on social media. It's just um, every now and then I have like some really important updates and uh, new movement I'm working on, a uh, new finishing type I just discovered. And I'm only sharing those things. And every now and then when the watch is finished. So only like more the important stuff. How many, it, how, it how, how many watches, yeah, exactly. How many watches uh, are you producing currently? You don't, have, you don't have to tell, just give us a roundabout what your goal might be and, and that kind of thing. Um, I'm <laughs> manufacturing around 20, 20 watches this year mm. and that's also the yeah, maximum amount I'm manufacturing also for next years so um, my heart is with producing a very few watches a year and just go all in on those separate projects so it will never be like um, yeah a manufacturing factory years it will always be like a very small business and yeah mm. it's, it's only 20 pieces I'm making at the moment and all by yourself. Yes. Hmm. That's just yeah. true independent watchmaking. That's it. Same with me. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, I, I'd like to help uh, uh, other, a few other watchmakers along the way. As I always do, I like to give back like, like this show, and, you know, which is very informative, we hope, for people that are watching uh, for years to come. Uh, but sa- same kind of analogy for me. It's, I'm a one-man show from design to CAD to CAM. It's, it's mm-hmm. a long day. Um, my nature is to work extremely slow, 
Like, I am beyond yeah. slow. I am not the guy who's going to make money fixing Rolexes. Like, it ain't going to happen, bro. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not doing 10 Rolexes a day for my paycheck. Some people, yeah. they are totally cut out for that. They love it. They love it. Repetition yeah. and, and, you know, doing that. Me, I'm just super slow to get something perfect. And if I can make, you know, five time pieces a year of, of what I do, um, I'm good to go. And uh, I roll along in what I do, creating my art. That's my art. And that's how, that's how mm-hmm. I roll. Because what you get from me is, is me, 100%. Uh, yeah. every, everyone's a little bit different and independent. That's why we'd like to get them on the show and discuss, you know, where they're at. Because you're very young. Hopefully, I'm here for another 30, 40 years, maybe 60, 70 years. And I could be the oldest human walking our planet. And we, we can come back and check in on you then. <laughs> see, how many you're going going there, see, Dan. see how many you're making. Oh, <laughs> I'm on number six, dude, but no. I'm done. I'm done, dude. It screws me that size. But <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> like in your case, you are making your, your movement. You are making all those separate parts. And part. Yeah, that just takes it takes time. Yeah. And you, you can't rush making these parts. No, it's actually the enjoyable part. Right now, you know, it's it's still like uh, like this is just just three weeks of machining here. These are the balance. Yeah, yeah, bridge. yeah. I saw it on your Instagram. Yeah, nice. Now, now this one hasn't been hasn't been seen yet. This is the actual balance. No, no, no. no. I've seen a different part on the Instagram. Yeah, yeah. You, you saw the uh, those are train bridges. This is uh-huh. uh, what, what I'm working on now. This is a one piece three dimensional uh, balance bridge, which is as far as I know has never been done either. Made out of solid steel. Um, so this is the, this just came off the machine yesterday, uh, uh, first, wow. uh, version one. Yeah. So it's completely three dimensional. So there's no separate legs. There's no separate, uh, lifting points, uh, or anything. It's one complete solid, uh, balance bridge. Uh, and it's, nice, it's, pretty, nice. it, cool. it's, it's, it's a lot of, uh, re, uh, design work, but now the design work then goes to the machine work. Uh, to get it to where it's, it sits in the watch perfect. So it's very time consuming what we do and I try to convey that to people. It's not just draw it on the computer and then either go make it on, on a Shablit or make it on a jig bora and then uh, you know four or five days later, I got my piece, okay, let me just put it in the watch. It's like yeah. not how this works. It's like- No, 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 it's just countless yeah. hours. When I look at my, my, my newest piece, this uh, Terra Luna model with in-house movement, until now I've spent more than yeah, 1,700 hours. No, 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 wait. This, um, wait, let me, let me. Go for it there, yeah, yeah. So, uh, that's the Charlotte, that's something else, isn't it, Dan? No, 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 that's no. That one, uh, this one took me yeah, less time because it was built on an um, ETA base, but I'm not sure. Let's see, hang one moment here, one moment. Let's see if we can do this for you. Yeah, 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 man. So tell us what we're looking at, Stefan. That's your in-house? Yes. Yeah, it's it's difficult. Is it showing up right? It can... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's actually pretty good for for the platform. Yeah, uh, yeah. And that's the new in-house movement. Wow, that's that's yeah. better there. That's better there. Do show that again, Stefan. Show, do that again. That, that was me messing about with the settings there. Perfect, right there. Wow. That's badass, bro. Yeah, but until now, um, it took me yeah, 1,700 hours. You know, coming up with the ID, um, testing different parts, um, trying to tackle every problem uh, with this model in 3D. Um, yeah, and at the moment, I'm building it. Are you working in SolidWorks? What, what 3D, 3D program? Oh, no, no, I'm, I'm using a Fusion 360. Okay, killer. Yeah, a lot of people are using that now. Yeah, it's really nice. It's mm-hmm. uh, it's a cut. It's come. Um, yeah, you can you can make perfect drawings in it. In drawings in it. It's really yeah user friendly. Yeah, when I when I uh, started to learn a few years ago, uh, I kind of I went to online school for it. It was between Fusion three hundred and sixty and SolidWorks. I just ended mm-hmm. up with SolidWorks because SolidWorks is tied to CamWorks, which is what I'm using for for Cam. So they're, oh, okay, yeah, they're, yeah, it's all in the same. Uh, uh, they, once you're done with a CAD model. I can, I'm in the same program and I'm already working on CAM. Yeah, but that's the same for Fusion 360. Mm. It's it's cut, it's CAM. Um, you can make renders, you can do a strength test, uh, you can do everything in Fusion 360. Yeah, I, I, it's a monster. I, I, yeah, I, it's, it's really nice. Yeah, yeah. 
and it's very reasonably priced uh, at the moment, let's say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, but just, it, it, it takes so much hours. But yeah, it's um, yeah, it's a hobby. It's so, a passion. So tell us a little about the new uh, in-house movement. Are you uh, how you came about? Uh, what what is it? Is it based on uh, another uh, uh, ca uh, caliber or fill us in? Um, yeah, I can. Yeah. Um, this model started in 2018. So in 2018, I built the very first prototype of this one. Uh, the prototype was actually built on an ETA movement. Wait, I will grab it. This was the prototype I made in 2018. Mm -hmm. So that was the first watch ever made with a 3D Earth, 3D Moon balance wheel on the front and a sub dial. And from then I started designing my own movement, my in-house movement. Uh, this movement, uh, the ETA movement, it's 37 millimeters in diameter. And this movement I'm working on at the moment, it's 33 millimeters in diameter. So that's the first difficult part to like get like all the components in a very small space. Mm -hmm. And this movement of 33 millimeters will have, of course, you know, the gear train and balance wheel and everything. And it has a 3D earth complication. It has a 3D moon complication with quick set. It has a balance wheel on the front. It has a sub dial. And the most difficult part was to fit everything of this inside a watch case that will be 39 millimeters in diameter and 10 millimeters high. Right. And, and the, yeah, the 3D wow, Earth and 3D wow. Moon will be yeah, six millimeters in diameter. And so it was like a very tight space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with it's that was the most difficult part. It was what, like an enormous puzzle to solve. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very big puzzle, especially in CAD. Yeah. What uh yeah, yeah. what yeah, what, what gears are you uh manufacturing for, for that for your new movement there? Um for the gear train, I used uh part of the ETA movement. Um, some parts are made by me, some parts are modified by me, and some parts I use directly from this movement. And uh, the gears for driving the earth complication, driving the moon complication, and winding the spring barrel are, ma are made by me. So, oh, so you're making the gears and you're heat treating them and everything. Yes, Wait, yes. I, I don't know how you learned all this crap, dude, without, without not Internet. <laughs> <laughs> Internet knows everything. <laughs> this is yeah, that's, you know what right. I'm saying? Johnny, right? That's why you're shaking your head. That's why Johnny's been shaking his head for like the last five minutes. It's that's what I do for a living, man. I shake my head because I can't speak. <laughs> 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 but, yeah. Uh, so, um, so I, I, I just found an image of uh, the, the movement online. So I'm going to try and uh, get that up in a moment or two there. So uh, mm -hmm. I, yeah. I do all this graphic design stuff when you guys are talking, like, you know, so. Uh, it's <laughs> It's the part of, of what I find so fascinating is not many people we can interview, Johnny, that, that didn't, you know, they're not traditionally trained, that got this far, this young. Um, yeah. You know, I, I still, it's still baffling my brain as a watchmaker because it's okay if someone has figured out how to, you know, move some gears around and put some jewels in it and make a module and place it on top of an eater. I mean, they kind of just figured that out. But Stefan has taken this into watchmaking land, like where you're a real watchmaker. Without being, Absolutely. without sitting next to a watchmaker for years and at least apprenticing and not going to school, but maybe in the old days that's how you learned. You know, a lot of times yeah. apprenticing. He he yeah. did not, none of the above. He has a couple of friends that are watchmakers. When he gets stuck, probably he could probably go visit visit his watchmaker. But I'm sure he's past that by now. It just shows you, you know, you, you can you can do it. Um, yeah. There's a, there's also there's also how did you learn how to do the plating? Same thing you learned online, correct? I did the rhodium plating and all that. Yeah, it's uh, it's just trying. The uh, plating took me yeah months before I finally had it right. But at the moment, I can do um, rhodium plating, nickel plating, and gold plating and copper plating. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's it's yeah just one of those things you have to learn yourself. Yeah, and uh, mm -hmm. it, you know it, it's very it's very good to learn your, to learn for yourself because I know a lot of people that have. They're independents and they, they say, I'm overloaded. You know, I don't know crap about, you know, rhodium plating. Let me just send it out to this guy. He's a specialist. He can do it. You know, he rhodium plates bicycle parts. 
and I'm sure he yeah, can do yeah, this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and they spend six months making, a, you know, some parts for their timepiece, and they actually sent them their real parts, and they came back like crap. So that's yeah, what, yeah, yeah. more and more of what happens in independence is we try, we do, we we try in the beginning maybe to farm out little things here or there. Uh, and if we're not in Switzerland, it's why I'm explaining this to you. Mm-hmm. In Switzerland, everyone's a freaking master. You know, it's going to come back yeah, correct. Yeah. We don't. He's not. Uh, Steph is not in Switzerland. I'm not in Switzerland, and and Johnny's in in, in Ireland. <laughs> so imagine, you know, and any one of us trying to get any of this done, um, and it comes back and it's like crap. And then you you know you lose faith sometimes, not in just what you're doing, but you lose faith in what other people in your country's standard is for excellence. Because watchmaking is not. A zero percent room for error. It's above a zero percent room for error. They're, it's like beyond the beyond the beyond the beyond. You know. So, I mean, it's and it's not just for us as watchmakers. That's how we're trained. But it's nowadays. You, when you buy a watch, you get to see through the back. You know, in the old days, Rolexes, you, you you still don't see through the back. Only we get to see that. You know, same with Patek Philippe's and the, the old ones. The case mm-hmm. is closed. You didn't get to see that. Now everyone gets to see it. They put on a magnifying glass and they're like. It's not rhodium plated correctly. Oh, look at these Geneva stripes. That's not done the old way. So everyone's got an opinion, you know, even, even though they're not a watchmaker. So what happens is that, that gets back to us, and the person, get, the watchmaker, gets pissed off. The guy rhodium plated incorrectly, and he goes out and just, just tries to figure it out on their own. Everything has to stop when we do that. That means we're not working anywhere else. I'm not working on my balance bridge. I'm not working on this. I'm not working on that. Uh, to get and learn that. Then the next thing is, okay, uh, let me send out, I just need a little sub sub uh, numbers printed on my dial for the sub second hand, if we have a sub second hand. Uh, I don't have a pad printing machine. I don't know how that crap works, right? I'm not really interested in that. And we give it, we send it to a dial factory. It comes back, it's not to our standards. And once mm-hmm. again, we have to learn another job. And if you're wondering why, when you pick up the George Daniels book, he ended up, Having to know 53 jobs, there it is. I just presented it for you. Because nobody can do it as good as we want to do it, especially when we have extreme OCD, like most of <laughs> amazing independence does. And obviously, Stefan has extreme OCD. And yeah, yeah. I pointed this out every time. You know, you can't wake up and be the, the lone guy in your shop. Just you wake up and you know you look at all these tools and machines all around me and all around him, and just get to work, like. You got to be out of your mind to do that, and then produce something like Stefan has done, or other independents do. That's what makes us all nuts and crazy. But that's what we are. We're, we're creating micro mechanical art now, and it's so wonderful that we're in that time where we, we're not making art for time. You know, uh, we're making art for art. It just time is in there and is presented in whatever way we would like to present it. You have your unique yeah. way of presenting your time, but it really is what we wear on the wrist. The, the collectors now. Is, it's yeah, true, it's, it's true, a piece yeah. of art you can wear on your wrist and just can take it everywhere. Mm-hmm. That, that's the same as how I see it. Yeah, that's 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 the point of that total yeah. stu- stupid long rant that I was just on. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was like, you know, I, what, I'm, what I'm always trying to present here for independence now is because some people just go, dude, how do you see the time on those things? Yeah. Well, you know what, dude? You, you it's on your phone. It's really not about no. that. We, we've really surpassed that now because um, uh, the ideas that are out there for uh, micro mechanics, it, it's just insane. It's, it's beyond our boundaries and the walls have been taken down in the last 15 years. We don't have to just turn the watch over to have the craziness inside there and all the complications. Now we can't place it on the front. It really is secondary that you know the time. It's a statement that mm-hmm. the collector is wearing. Does it fit your personality for that time period in your life that you're in right now? Because we all change. Mm-hmm. And that's that's why collectors change their timepieces or change their cars or change their women. Whatever it might be, they go through a few years of this, a few years of that, and we evolve, we change as humans. That's not what representative. That's why, you know, you have this shirt for these two, three years, and maybe you have a different kind of shirt or you or your glasses or whatever it may be. And that's the wonderful thing about human nature and art. And, and it's a wonderful thing is we have people like Stefan and other independents that can represent independent watchmaking. Uh, and yeah, that's why Stefan, I, don't, I know you're young, but don't take those comments of when you look on a form and you you know you release a new model of your timepiece and someone says, what a piece of crap, man. Why doesn't it just tell the time? 
you know, <laughs> just, you know, don't, Steph, don't pay attention to it because. Yeah, you, you can't please everybody, you know. You, you, you know, it's not, it's not yeah, that. You're, you're going to produce, if you're going to be, be happy making 0.8% of the 100% of people that even know you're alive happy, that's good. Just, just roll on. Everyone, everyone's got a comment. Let, let them. They're, they're, there's plenty of other artists for them to go like somewhere else. It just doesn't fit them. Some totally. people, some people are hateful. That's not who I'm talking about. I'm just saying, in that period of their life, they might look at something I make and it just makes them throw up. Uh, three years <laughs> later, they may come back around and go, "Man, I really didn't." Because you'll see them on the forums too. Later on, they come back around and go, "You know, the first time I looked at that, it really didn't look like." I liked it. The same thing when they see a new car, right? And a, a new shape of a new car, a new Corvette, right? Everyone, uh, mid-engine Corvette, that piece of crap. Yeah, it's not a front-engine Corvette. Blah, blah, blah. And if, uh, two, two years from now, that Corvette dude probably be driving the same thing he'd be driving one. So, yeah. so just roll yeah, on. Just, like, like, yeah, we are just following our own vision of how watchmaking should be. And, yeah, if, if we can find customers that also are um, yeah, seeing the same vision, then um, yeah, then that's good enough for me. Yeah. But like, yeah, it's the same for me. Yeah. Like yeah, it's just a very small part of all the collectors that are interested in a a three D Earth that's rotating inside a watch. Yeah, it's we, we will put like an Earth inside a watch. <laughs> but it's, yeah, I, I'm just lucky that there are a few other enthusi enthusiastic yes. people yes. that yeah. also yeah. have the same view. And there are always people that will say, okay, the time it's difficult to read, but yeah. It's three That's not one of my customers. It's three yeah. dimensional art. Putting three dimensional micro mechanical art on yeah, your wrist yeah, yeah. It's, it's insane. It's it's beyond. And you do it without, without a CNC machine, John. So that's just so everyone knows, it's, it's quite a difficult task. Um, um, especially yeah, it's, it's hand engraved, the complete earth. Yeah. So this, uh, the ball itself, it's made by me by hand. Yeah, I think if you go to the 3D Terra Emotion, not this one, but the, uh, this was like a very old version. Uh, no, different one. Yeah, here you can see like, yeah, here, yeah, nice, this one. Okay. Um, so I manufacture um, this um, 3D, yeah, 3D, I, I manufacture this um, round metal ball. <clears throat> what I do then is, is paint this complete ball black. Then I will draw all the continents on top of it. And then everything is hand engraved. So not a single globe is the same. And so I engrave all the water away. In this way, the continents will be higher than the water. Then I will start painting the water. I will use uh, five different colors of blue in order to create like extra depth. So <laughs> the closer you will go to the continent, the lighter the water is, the further away you go from the continent, the more dark blue it will be. And yeah, then I will finish the, the globe with epoxy in order to give this water even extra depth. Hmm. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. That's crazy. Yeah. You're beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, man. Yeah. Right yeah, and, and like this, it's not for everybody. But lucky there are like few people around that also can appreciate the, the visual effect of it. And also, yeah, the time I'm putting in this. There's another watchmaker who uses the expression not for everybody, and your work reminds me of his, and that would be uh, Stepan Sarpaneva. I know mm. they're very different. Yeah, yeah. They're, nice. they're very different in their design and in their style, yeah. but mm -hmm. they're both you and he, they're, they're highly individual. And, uh, you know, and as you said, they're not for everyone, but they're, yeah. uh, there's something about it that you know, they, they stand out. And there's that look of, uh, I, I have described in the intro, I, I did a couple of pieces earlier on for social media and for YouTube and things like that. Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's, it's like a combination of traditional values with a, a thoroughly contemporary twist mm -hmm. to them. Because there, there are definitely uh, uh, suggestions of old English pocket watches and things like that there with, with, with the, the dial and the three-dimensional down the furniture if you like mm -hmm. on the dial on the on the plate you know yeah, it's, um, it's a lot of depth i'm trying to create yes. yeah. yeah i think you nailed it johnny actually exactly what you said is it's my yeah, perception thanks. as well yeah very yeah. nice it, it, it's the second the first second you see it the 
The first second yeah. you see it, you think traditional, and then at the same time, you're seeing uh, the globe and the modernism. This, it, yeah, that is perfect. not traditional at all. Yeah. Like it is, is uh, it, it's futuristic. It's, it's actually, is it? Yeah, everybody would have their own perception of it, of these things. It's retro futuristic. It's like it's old, but it's very funky and cool and new. And uh, man, like I love that. Like in the same way as I love uh, what Stepan uh, Sarpaneva does. I think that is uh, that and the uh, the Terra three D uh, that we looked at a moment ago. There, they're just absolutely spectacular pieces, you know. And uh, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thanks for a compliment. It's yeah, very, yeah. very nice. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, well, I think you kind of know that. And we'll, you know, what we try to do is is um, let the, the people watching know that the struggle that we have uh, as independents, but we also like to present to them that it's it's our art. You know, it's just like when I started my music stuff. And it, it's I didn't care what other people thought. It's that that's what was inside of me. And if they can oh, say, yeah, yeah, exactly. hey, yeah, my, yeah. my music sounds like crap and this and that, then you know what? There's plenty of other music. But, you know, these select little amount of people that happen to love my music, uh, that's mm -hmm. my family, you know, and their family yeah. starts to grow. That's 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 all what art is about. Um, we're, we're, you have to go your own way in order to yeah. be unique, to be yourself. And yeah. you, you shouldn't walk in someone else's footsteps. It's just, mm -hmm. it should be your mm -hmm. way. Or, uh, we're yeah, and especially we're in the watchmaking world, you should be unique. There are already like so many brands that just look like each other. Mm -hmm. And in order to stand out, you have to do yeah some crazy things, like well, building your own movement. <laughs> what you're doing? Yeah, that's <laughs> just pure insanity. <laughs> it is insane. Yeah. I got three, yeah. three and a half years here, uh, you know, research and development, and and four years of escapement development. So it yeah, right. it takes a long time to do what what, what I'm doing. But that, that's here now there. It's it's presenting uh, who we are and leaving a legacy of who we are. And if you have a good uh, grasp on what you are, then there's going to be other people that enjoy what you produce. You, you nailed it. You know, you're, the way your watch looks, you, you have a great understanding of human nature and of other people. We don't, we don't make things to please other people. We make things to please ourselves. It just so happens it makes people uh, um yeah, uh, love what we do and, and love what we are doing, yeah, yeah, and they, yeah. they want a greater insight into what we're doing. And mm -hmm. and thank goodness for social media and the way you present your Instagram stuff. And uh, it is people get that back uh, the backstory. You know, they see your machines. They yeah, see yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the other side to you. Uh, I think it's incredible that you you made the gear making machine. I, I've seen it before. I don't want to say anything. Um, that's actually what collectors they want to see that because that's what makes up you and you is what makes up mm -hmm. what, what your art is. So we, we all need to present that. And I'm only saying that for the younger watchmakers that are out there, that don't be scared. Uh, don't, uh, I'm making a wheel, I'm making a wheel. No, let us see the machines you're using to right. make the wheel. If it's a struggle and you only have two lathes, show us, because that proves that you're, you're, you're out of your freaking mind, that you're doing it. And that's the cool part. That's, what, that's yeah, perseverance. But, but that is what the collectors wanted to see. The collectors are just... They, they don't buy a watch. They buy, um, how do you say it in English? Um, yeah, they, they, will, they will buy a journey. So it's, uh, they will buy the complete story. So yeah. when you look at the watch, your watch, they are looking just at you working, um, filing on those gears, uh, milling those gears and everything. So I think it's very important that every customer and future customer knows what you are doing. Yep. And yeah, it's the same with your Instagram. You're also like posting pictures of parts you are milling. And that is what makes those new customers enthusiastic. Without a doubt. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, well we, you can't compare me to anybody else because there's no one on planet Earth that's like me because if you get one of my timepieces, you're actually wearing a piece of memorabilia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's <pretty amazing>. yeah. <laughs> ah, you can't top me. You can't top me again. <laughs> well, you know what I need? I need Stefan to make me a Mars globe. You know, with my with like the, the, my song that's playing on planet Mars with NASA. You know, like NASA on one side, and you know, I can put that in my watch with a piece of like a Mars rock or something. I think you should do that, man. <laughs> uh, give me three days. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you know what we have, uh, to um, Stefan? Do you know what again, look, I am sorry, folks. Anybody who expects in the metal to end 
at 59 minutes and 59 seconds. <laughs> we send our sincere apologies. Uh, we are <laughs> hitting one hour, our, one hour 20 at the minute, and we still have a question that uh, we didn't ask. What about your music? Do you listen to it? What kind of music do you listen to when you're working, or do you listen to anything, or is it just the sound of the... Uh, no, no, no. I'm um, I'm always playing mu music, but yeah, I I would say I don't really have a music taste. So I can listen to deep house. I can listen to minimalistic techno, um, Bob Marley, nineties um, music. It's it's just whatever my mood is. So when I'm alone in my workshop, I'm always playing music. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's be, uh, it, it, Once again, right? Everybody's listening if they're still here. It's, they would always huh? think that, you know, we're in complete silence all the time, like watchmaking school, but we're not. You know, even at watchmaking school, we got we got headphones in and we're blasting whatever. Huh? It's, it just goes no, to No, no, no. I've got, like, a, a complete speaker surround sound system, so... Hey, no, hey, no, hey, there's always good music. Yeah. Music comes no, to savage peace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that's it's brilliant. Awesome, yeah. Because uh, it's, it's not like when you're working uh, in your own environment there, and you can uh, you get you have the place to yourself, and you can crank it up, and uh, <laughs> yeah. you, you know it, it, it's <laughs> people. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Uh, so some go to Africa, and then. <laughs> 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 but then, uh, uh, it, it's, it's all, always good to know what what what's going on in the atelier when you're working there. You know what kind of. Uh, what what the ambience is around you, like you know, and uh, I don't listen to my, my music as well. I don't listen to any talk radio or I don't watch television around the other. Right. It's it's music pretty much uh, all the time, like you know. So um, mm -hmm. Abba, I love Abba, and uh, but <laughs> no, I don't, man. I don't. I've been listening to Tool all day and Anthrax all day yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you have brain damage. <laughs> <laughs> That's why, yeah, because I haven't left it, I can feed it rattling, like you know. But, uh, so, uh, but uh, hey, it's, uh, it's been, I think we've uh, covered quite a lot of stuff here tonight. Uh, there was one question, and there was a couple of questions. We did ask one about the 3D printing. Uh, there was, yeah, Lulu in uh, Indonesia again had asked the question about copycat. Competitors, have you experienced this yet at all, Stefan? Or yeah, I, I think it's an unwritten rule in the watchmaking world that you are not copying each other's work. So that, that's what you mean with the question, right? I I don't know. I, I'm wondering is it the question more towards counterfeit or uh, people who are trying to rip off your uh, your uh innovation your design your 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 feel like i have seen no, it no, I, I i can't i can't say that people are taking my designs it's, but yeah, yeah as i told you it's more like an unwritten rule in the watchmaking world that you should be unique with your design especially yeah. in the independent watchmaking world it's yeah it's everyone should go their own way and when they are copying each other's work then yeah it will be their their end of their watchmaking career so it's, yeah well, I, I don't think I mean, I don't worry about it at all because in, in independent, it's, it's um, they really are, like Stefan said, they're, they're buying uh, our journey. They're buying a piece of us. They get to talk to the true uh, watchmaker that's making yeah. their piece. So if somebody copies something, first of all, you know, patents just don't work anymore, basically. You know, they, yeah. were, no, they were- Most they, patents are old. Uh, they, yeah. they, there is no patents in watchmaking. No matter what anybody tells you, they, right. they're there. Everything has been invented, so it's just you're building upon something that's older and the patent's worn out anyway. Mm -hmm. But if someone's taking your idea, they say they, whatever it may be, then they know they, they're out in pretty fast anyway. They're probably not a real true uh, a watchmaker. Whatever they're presenting is just secondhand cheese. If you want to get the, the real cheese, no, yeah, it's made yeah, yeah, yeah. in a cheese factory, they'll find us. We're not, we're not, if we were producing 1,000 watches no. a year or 2,000 watches a year, and it's just strictly about money and buying a bigger house, and those are the people that worry about things like that. When you're an artist and you produce five, 25 pieces, the most, 10 pieces, whatever it may be, I don't think we really, you know, if, you, if you're not buying it for me, you're buying crap. No, I, no, I, yeah. I, it's, it's yeah. also, yeah, the money I earn with watchmaking, it's the, all, the, all the money stays in the company. It's, it's buying new equipment. It's trying to improve stuff. And I, I'm driving a false focus from 2004. And 
it's 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 good enough for me. Yeah, but you don't need to go anywhere. You're in your shop, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All you need is more machines and more tools. You don't need a car. Yeah, and then we are happy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't need to go anywhere, bro. Just get have somebody I'm else get you food. But uh, so you rode on your bike tonight. You took your bicycle from the uh, from your 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 home back to the the workshop tonight. So uh, yeah, I, I I agree. I I think things you got are uh, the older I get. The less important things you got are to me, like the, the the age of the car or things you got there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's more the uh, the important things are the little things, and uh, like like the watches. And there again, there's watches. Or like you could argue that there's no we don't need watches at all, it's particularly now because we have everything we need on our phone, our time, date, calendar, everything we got there. But still, mm -hmm. people are making watches. Because people are buying watches, and that is the it's just it, it, it's a timeless thing that has people have a fascination with, and uh, I, I I love it. But uh, so I think what we uh, we have uh, as I said <laughs> we've come to uh, over uh, over uh, one hour twenty one hour twenty five. So Stefan, I've really enjoyed listening to uh, your so improv here tonight. Super, super. Yeah, and look at uh, yeah, it. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's uh, it's a really good honor. No, 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 it's, it's look, look. Th thanks for taking the time. It's it's um, it, it was actually expected but unexpected because Stefan is I mean, he's super intellectual uh, uh, being. It's which is I wasn't I was expecting him to be very smart and very um, using uh, his ingenuity to. To somehow get where he is, and that was like, how did he get here? Was my question, and now we know. You know, he he also was building stuff his whole life. You know, he was in him to yeah. just build and get it done, and somehow, and with his uh, with his uh, engineering background, that obviously plays a massive, huge part. And we look we look at someone like Stefan, and we do look like uh, look like someone like Hajime Osaka, who has an architectural background. There's always some underlying factor where you know they're, they're working with intersecting lines and mathematics or something you know some kind of calculations that that can get someone who didn't go to a traditional school to the place where they are and that's the fascinating part of the journey that it should show anyone that you can persevere and do anything you really set your mind to and don't, don't let anyone anyone tell you you can't do it and if they do yeah you have to you know, shut, your shut that person up yeah. by doing it because then that person will be down here looking up at you going, how the hell did he do that? How did he do that? Hard, yeah. hard work, that's how. And that watch yeah. that, he, that he criticized three years ago, you can't buy it now because it's, it's tripled in price on the second hand market. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, need, you definitely need to raise your prices, Stefan. Yeah. So, so, uh, January, January, January 1st, January 1st, jack them prices up, bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're gonna do a pigeon man or something. You know, so, uh, but uh, yeah, so yeah. My, my new price range after the show it's in between the 30k and 100k. So it's uh, yeah, if you're interested, yeah, like yeah. That. <laughs> yeah. we yeah. gotta support these college industries, you know. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. and I'll, I'll, I'll uh, DM you, we'll talk about uh, CNC and uh, if I could be of any help, absolutely. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. okay. Brilliant. Well, there's Shane. Is he wants to get his shirt in there as well? Man, you better. Are you taking? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you know, Shane. Shane says he wants to. He wants to. You know, buy one of your watches really fast before they go up. And I'm yeah. trying to explain to people. Stefan's not going to be making his. He's got a new in-house movement, right? So listen, people. He's not going to be making any of that other stuff soon. And that in-house movement is now like a lot of money. So you better get in now. <laughs> you better just place your orders for everything else he's making. That's it. But you, you yeah, if I'm, if I'm looking at my uh, current order book, <laughs> it's um, for this year. Um, I don't take new orders. Uh, mm. Next year, my order book is nearly full, Excellent. and then I'm planning for yeah 2022. Wonderful. So it's it's insane. That's yeah. wonderful. You're, you're fantastic. Amazing. Fantastic, man. Yeah. I'm just going to put in here because, Joe, a lot of obviously with the coronavirus and the lockdown, all of the high streets have been shut down. All of the big jewelers, all the massive authorized dealers with 
the great, the Grand Maisons, your Patex, Audemars Piguet, your Rolex, etc., etc. They've all been closed down. Sales are down on the floor. But the independent watch sector has been strong throughout this. And people are becoming more yeah, aware. Yeah. And I think it is absolutely fantastic to see you guys coming along. And um, Stefan, you're only 27. Man, I've been pushing up daisies for the time you retire. So I, I think it, so I can't wait to see all the stuff that you'll be uh, coming out with over the coming years with your new in-house movement. And you know, it's uh, it's a credit to you. And uh, I, I, I'm delighted. For there's our good friend Pietro. He uh, thanks, Pietro. Great shout, shout out to Pietro. Pietro the man. <laughs> he is the man. So uh, he has. Uh, He's been a great supporter of the independents as well, and he offers a great platform as well, just as a, for for all of the independent brands to champion them, even if they're sold out or not available, just to be able to promote and to let people know that uh, that, that you're um, that that the independent watches that I exist. are right there. So, uh, so thanks for joining us, everybody. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank yes. you for, for Thank you all. all around the world. From I know that you're watching us in, in Indonesia, in Asia, in the United States, and across Europe, uh, UK, Ireland, hopefully. And uh, it, it's been fantastic to introduce the work of another absolute star of the independent uh, sector. And Stefan, we hope yeah. part of the gig about uh, In the Metal is that we hope that some of our guests will be happy to make a return visit sometime when they've got something new to show us and we can go through mm -hmm. all the nitty gritty and learn what had uh, what what you've been doing and what you've been getting up to so the the invitation is open if you ever like to come back again and if we haven't scared you or i know dan might scare you but uh <laughs> you're uh yeah when it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, when it's finished we can uh yeah we could talk again then i can sure. show you uh how the watch turn out? Yep, and also uh, once the uh, pandemic is uh, has been uh, solved and we, we get to move on, thankfully, uh, yeah. when, I, when I start to travel a little bit, I would love to come to your TA and we can uh, talk about your machines and that kind of cool stuff. And uh, that's the way. Yeah, you're welcome. Absolutely. I have Everyone. a great coffee corner in my atelier, so uh, yeah. the coffee is uh, <laughs> is always ready. Excellent. That's Everyone. great. Stephen. Yeah, thank you everyone for watching us again tonight for uh, another episode of In The Metal. We are back again next week. Uh, we will have another uh, amazing personality from the, the watch industry, uh, someone who does restorations of old historic timepieces and uh, breathes new life into them and uh, a, a real star uh, from, from England. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, welcoming her next week as well. Yep. Her. So, um, folks, thank you so much again for, for joining us. And uh, we will catch you same time, same place next week. And uh, all the best from Ireland. Peace out, everybody. Thanks for joining in. Thank you very much again, Stefan. Uh, uh, yeah, you're keep, welcome. Keep pounding away, my friend. Representing your country is just a wonderful thing, man. Uh, you're doing a great job. Yeah, I will. And, and representing Terrific. independent watchmaking, man. We thank you, thank you, thank you from all of us from the bottom of our hearts for Absolutely. being on our show and yes, being a wonderful thanks. representation right of, of the younger generation of of uh, people really breaking through and making incredible micro mechanical art. They can make a film about our endings and call it the long goodbye because yeah. you know. <laughs> 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 oh, wait, one more question for 1999. The ending is like half an hour. You get two for 1999, not one. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> okay. Stephen, hold farther. Don't go away. And uh, so, thank you, everyone. We'll see you next time on In the Metal.